Hi everyone, I hope you are all doing well. The long awaited day, or is it afternoon, is here. I'm excited, um, really been feeling good about this month. And uh, something that I just came across, I don't know why it took me so long to discover this, but apparently eight is the number of new beginnings. So I've really been excited about that. I've been feeling good. I have expectations. I really believe that things are going to turn out well. I'm happy seeing people pivoting and just accepting our new norm, right? Uh, this month, we are focusing on physical and mental health. On Monday, we began the conversation on our tweet chat, our live tweet chat, talking about uh, specific to fitness and that was on fire and today I'm joined by a stellar, super stellar team of panelists, all fitness experts and on top of that we have a mental health practitioner. All right, so my name is Gadoni Mbogwa, I am a clinical psychologist and the head of digital relations at Chiromo Mental Health Hospital. Let me introduce to you the panel. Uh, we have um, Nyakenywa. Nyakenywa is joining us from um, yoga. She's a yoga teacher. So Nyakenywa is a trained counseling psychology, yoga teacher, and academic assistant at Africa Yoga Project. She is passionate about working with individuals through yoga to provide them with avenues of self-actual self-realization, wellness, and growth. Welcome, Nyakenywa. Karibu sana. Thank you, Yadani. Yes. Next on the panel, we have Ronald Okos. Ronald is a professional footballer at Sofaka FC. He is also the founder of RO Sports and RO Sports Soccer Academy, also a football analyst. Ronald, Karibu Sana. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure. Finally, it's, it's going down the much awaited day. Yes. Ah, thank you. I'm also very excited about this. And then, if you have been to any of our pages, you must have seen uh, some good workouts. That is Coach Ed. So Edmund Mujumba, I hope I said that uh, correct, is the head coach at Alpha Fit Gym and the founder of Z6 Cross Training, certified metabolic conditioning coach. Coach Ed, what does that mean? Certified metabolic conditioning coach. Wow. Well, Karibu sana. Thank you for having me. It means that anytime you walk out of the gym, the effect of a good workout. That's essentially what it stands for. But thank you so much for having me. I'm glad uh, and happy to talk about anything you want to talk about fitness really. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Coach. Uh, I'm looking forward to have this conversation with you today as well. And last but not least, um, we have Anyona Rachel, who uh, is a psychologist consultant and I'm so well on counseling firm, all the way from Nakuru joining us here. This is also another reason why I love the power of digital support. Yes, so all the way from Nakuru here to furnish us with a health, with a wealth of information, all right? Mm -hmm. So to my panelists and anybody watching, I like to um, encourage everybody on the panel to feel light, so this is my happy dance. Guys, can you do this? Yes. <laughs> Let me move. Yeah. Thank you guys for doing that. You see, you're all smiling. It means that you can <laughs> really feel better. It is my happy dance. And really, thank you for doing this with me. All right. Um, let's start uh, with Ronald. How are you feeling today, Ronald? Please unmute. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. 
Yeah, I can say I'm, feel, I'm feeling good, uh, basically because I'm um, just from having my one-hour workout routine every day. And I think it really re-energizes me, it really puts me in the mood to push on the day. So I think um, trying to keep fit, trying to work out every morning, uh, keeps me in the mood. And uh, I'm feeling good and so excited that even, we are even having this discussion. So it's such a good day and I'm really looking forward to uh, our workout day. Yeah. Oh wow! Uh, I I really I feel ashamed. We've already had a one hour work with you. Wow. So Ronald, uh, tell us uh, because you've been a sportsman for you know quite a while. You've played for different um, teams. In your own opinion or in your own view, uh, how are sportsmen are uh, dealing given the circumstances that they can't maybe play as much as they used to play? Uh, regard so i'm sure that has affected them in many different ways how has this affected them generally yeah, yeah good, good good question i think uh, it's been quite a difficult difficult period uh, for all of us sportsmen and actually sportsmen alike uh, because uh, we are we are, things are not normal things are not the way we used to we, we, we used to you know uh, things are not the way they used to be before uh, main reason because uh, uh, you find that uh, uh, right now we're not playing any games. There are no matches being played. You know, we are not training with the team. It's actually almost five months now we've not played any act active football. And, uh, you know, also that even uh, uh, replicates back to even, uh, you know, the, the salaries we have. Some of us are on half pay, uh, half pay salary. And uh, they, they even teams that are probably not even being paid. And uh, uh, we are missing out on our allowances. We have families back at home. Uh, we have children. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of responsibilities and all this actually just piling up. And again, on this other side, you are used to training every day in the morning. And now you can imagine you're not training at that high, highest level that you're used to. Now you're just maybe doing your own uh, small workout. So I, I think it's been a very difficult period for many, uh, many, many footballers or many sportsmen because uh, things are just not normal. And uh, uh, it's, so, it's so sad because, again, we don't have people to like counsel us to just show us the way to just try and you know walk walk with us through this path, and I, I, this discussion to me it has come at the right time because it was much needed, it was long awaited, and I'm hoping I'm very sure even the federation, even some some of the footballers are watching, some of the sportsmen coaches are watching, because we are actually looking for looking for solutions, and there's no better people to look for solutions from like from you professionals. So I'm really excited about this, and I'm hoping maybe by the end of uh, uh, today we'll. I've gotten a lot of tips on how maybe you can, you know, pull, pull, pull out of this mess that we are into right now. I, I can't hear you. You've, uh, you've muted. You've muted. Sorry about that. I'm saying uh, because this conversation is also linked to mental health and not put you on the spot. Do yeah. you feel like uh, there's a change in regards to the mental health? Because of what, what have you like observed has come as a result of all these losses and not being able to play? I think it it has come it, it has come with a lot of negativity in terms of even uh, mentally. I think uh, most of us we are not that mentally strong because uh, we've had even cases of uh, players contemplating of quitting football during this period, and we've had players. You know, some of them are even I, I even uh, there's a post I I I saw some time back. Uh, I think is one of the players playing in the amateur leagues. Uh, I don't know if he maybe was just pulling people's legs or anything, but it was a serious post. He was trying to say that you know he's given up. With life and maybe somebody should reach out to him before it's too late because he finds that he, he found that thing that the, the going is getting tough and i'm uh, i'm sure maybe guys reach out to him and uh, it just tells you the picture it just paints for you the whole picture of uh, the general mood of players because uh, mentally i don't think we are that strong that it has come with a lot of stress a lot of uh, you know depression uh, if you look at uh, the responsibilities that you have and again if you look at your career career wise like things are not really shaping up you're not going back to work. And uh, uh, again, with the, with the challenges that we've been facing in our football as well, we've been going through a lot of uh, turmoil in terms of even mm -hmm. management and everything. And now you, you can add you can add now the, the, the pandemic side of things, making, it, making things even worse. So to us, mm -hmm. it's been quite a very difficult period. And uh, it's actually, actually the, 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 strong, the, the stronger ones are the, are the ones surviving. But the rest, I think uh, people are really depressed out here. People are really 
uh, crying out for help and uh, uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping that we can really find a solution in terms of how sportsmen or maybe how just you know, anybody engaged in sports and now is not actively active in, involved in sports can actually find help so that we can at mm -hmm. least uh, over, overcome whatever we are going through but it's actually a difficult period I can tell you that I can test to that and I'm mm -hmm. just hoping things will get much, much better time yeah well, um, let me let me uh, hear from Coach Coach Ed because you're also in a space where uh, people come to you in in regards to fitness. Uh, there's a lot of vigorous um, activity, so I'm I'm imagining that most of the people around you are engaged in similar activities, if not more, to what to what Ronald is also talking about. Maybe from your own opinion, what have you been able to observe? also given the measures that people are not coming to the gym, uh, how has that affected their mental health? Well, I'd say, yeah, since this whole COVID thing started, um, obviously before that, more and more people were encouraged to, uh, to step out of their houses, to have something to do uh, at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day. So guys have come up with some sort of a routine. So if you are a morning person, you knew coming to the gym, you do a morning class, if you're an evening person, you know, at the end of the day, you have a workout. So that always mm -hmm. fed fit into people's routines. So I think mm -hmm. just the fact that this disrupted routine, that's where the problem started because now guys are like, okay, I now have too much time in my hands. I'm not too sure what to do with it. So usually that breeds a little bit of like, um, you know, this is where the mental health factor comes in because now people, once you take that away from them, they're never sure how to expend that energy that they need in the morning or in the evening. So I feel like most people who, um, who came to the gym or who are now they stuck at home because they can't come to the gym, um, that's usually what affects them. They're like, where is this routine? What am I going to do in replacement of this? So um, that's usually the main, main challenge we go through as a gym. Yeah. Coach, do people come to the gym specifically for fitness or are there other things that they get out of? Like, I don't know. I, are there normally like interviews or something, but when you talk to people, do they specifically come for fitness because they want to be fit? Or are well, there other reasons? For the most part, yes, people do come for fitness. Um, the fitness okay. is really holistic. It just touches on your, it's more like a community that people have built. Uh, regardless of wherever you go to, you come to other page, you come to any other gym, it's just a community sense that you've built. So you also kind of build a support group once you do that. Once you have a support group, you know that every morning you're going to find a group of friends and you're going to train together so that helps you deal with a lot of things or even in the weekend if you know that you're going to spend your time maybe having a barbecue with other people um you know it's with people who you kind of like have something in common with so fitness is not just the physical side but it's also you know the community as well that you build the friendships that you build uh the advice that you get from people um so yeah it, it really touches on a lot of things uh, and that's why it's even harder now for people to deal with it because it affects a big part of uh, their, their lifestyle yeah okay thank you for that um let's go to nyakedua from the vigorous activities shifting to what is more um serene something with a flow uh, other than fitness fitness what are some of um the general benefits of people engaging in yoga and also as, as you're looking into that um why yoga like why what would make you advise somebody to do yoga? Uh, thank you so much, Gadoni, for that question. Uh, first, like Coach Ed has mentioned, is uh, it's, it's almost similar. People come to practice yoga, uh, not mostly for the physical benefits, but also the, so the connection, the, physic the social connection that they get out of practicing together with other people. And then number two, why yoga? is I would say a good definition that we, ha we like to use at Africa Yoga Project is yoga is like, uh, practicing yoga is like going to the gym and the spa at the same time. So you have that experience of the gym and also that very relaxing experience of being at the spa and being pampered. So basically um, yoga, Yoga, um, the yoga that we practice at Africa Yoga Project is called Power Yoga. So it's power. It's um, quite physical, and it in, it has breath. It includes um, 
the the very intentional use of breath in um, in during the movement. So one of the bene the biggest benefits of that is that is awareness. And I know that awareness of the mind, awareness of the body is a very important tool. Um, so basically, yoga helps to relax the body. It helps to calm down, um, basically helps to calm down the parasympathetic nervous system. So then we are moving from a place of always being in, you know, fight, flight, and reacting to a place where um, there's an improved um, response to stressors in day-to-day day -day life. Ah, yes. thank you. I, I love the idea of uh, going to the gym at the, and, and as far at the same time. I'm, I'm, I'm sold. I'm, I'm really sold. Ronald and Coach Ed, do you guys engage in yoga? Have you tried yoga? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, on my side, I haven't tried yoga. I haven't tried yoga, but uh, I think it's something that I've always ha had an interest in uh, because I've seen some of our clubs, uh, some some specific clubs. They've actually been uh, involving some of these uh, yoga specialists to come maybe and have a session with uh, with the with the team. Uh, but otherwise, we are used to more. I think something that Edmond uh, actually knows maybe the, the Zumba classes. Uh, whereby we, uh -huh. we bring in someone like Edmond, or maybe we go to Alpha Fit Gym where he works, so that at least we can, mm -hmm. you know, uh, try and work, work work out as a team. But I think yoga is something that is quite interesting, and I'm really looking forward. Maybe even uh, I'll be telling our team manager about all this, so that we can in our next sessions probably will will yeah. be involved in the likes of Mary, and also maybe even Edmond will be coming on board. Yeah. Yeah, Edmond, uh, do men do yoga? Like, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, no, I mean, we, we worked with Africa Yoga Project before, so they've come down in a couple of sessions here, yeah, so we're not new to it. Mm -hmm. As well, there's aerial yoga, there's so many types of yoga out there, and during my years, I've learned that, um, you know, you can always incorporate different uh, uh, different disciplines, let's call them disciplines, so yoga being one of them, it can fit into what we do here, um, because you can't have one thing that works for everything, you know, you have something that can work right. for so I'd say yoga does benefit a lot, especially the mobility when it comes to bears. I think one of them relate to this mobility movements, those incorporate a lot of yoga stretches, yoga poses. Um, so those are quite important when it comes to functional fitness here at Africa. Thank you. And uh, on to Rachel. This conversation is specifically about physical fitness and mental health. And uh, Anyona, as our mental health expert on this panel, what is the connection between physical health and mental health? What is the connection? <clears throat> Please unmute. Okay. All right, sorry. Uh, you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. All right, thank you very much uh, for the involvement. I would say uh, mental health and physical fitness, they are, they are cousins. And each, they are independent, in, interdependent to the other. For one to be, to be assumed to, to have attained the mental health status, you must have all the aspects in place, including the physical aspect. You must have the physical, psychological, emotional, spiritual, all of them interconnected. And so uh, physical health, uh, like it rejuvenates, like I would say for my case, uh, physical exercise or fitness rejuvenates your mental well-being. Like it's, it's just a jump start of your brain. You know, everything that we do in our daily living, it's rewired from our thought processes in our brain. That's where everything is made. And when we start our day, let's say on a good foot, on exercising, on making sure that we are physically fit, it just makes the whole day a success already. That is the, the first day's success. When you start your day physically fit, eating healthy, and it, it actually boosts the, builds one's self-esteem, a self-image. And after all, when you exercise, you feel like, I mean, you look good and feel nice about it. So you go around walking 
with confidence, even if you are going to an office, you you knock that office with a lot of confidence because you know you have started your day on a on, on, on a good note on with the right foot. So I would say mental health and physical fitness, they are very good friends and incorporated, they can make they they bring the wholesomeness of an individual. They build us and make us a better, better people and make the world a better place to live because it's also working out is like also another way of debriefing. It's a way of um, relieving yourself from life stressors. Like when you are frustrated and you have a lot of anger, you, you are angry, emotions are all over the place and just go out and work out and put all that energy to a positive thing. That is a way of coping. So I would say mental health and physical fitness, they are, they are, it's a good duo. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel, for that. And for anybody who has joined us for this conversation, I would like to welcome you. And if you are watching this from any of the panelist pages and our page at Chiromo Mental Health Hospital, I would like to welcome you as well. Uh, please go to the chat box, ask the panelists questions you don't if you're watching this from facebook in the comment section you can ask um, any questions that you'd want if it's in relation to being a sportsman we have runners if it's in, in relation to going to the gym or anything to do with um, general fitness uh, we have coach ed here we have yoga and today we have known they specifically look at power yoga and we have a mental health expert in the panel um, as well. So don't be afraid. Um, I like what you've said, Anjona, uh, in regards to starting your day on a very positive note in regards to fitness. Mm -hmm. And not everybody is a morning person. For example, I'm not really a morning person. I'm actually like a night owl. Uh, it's like my energy increases towards uh, the end of the day. So uh, maybe for the people who are here as fitness experts, and there are guys like me out there who morning is just not their thing, uh, would they get equal benefit in regard to physical fitness uh, when they do any of their activities either midday or in the evening? Yeah. Maybe we can start with Mia Kenya. What do you think, uh, Mia Kenya? Yeah, I think um, physical uh, fitness is not a one size fits all. Um, and I'll share this from a personal experience. When we started um, working from home due to the lockdown, um, the COVID-19 situation, um, I started um, being unable to practice and I'm not a morning person just like you, Gadoni. So, uh, but then I, I got to a routine where I would practice in the evening, like around 6 p.m. And I would, I would um, practicing at 6 p.m. helped me sleep through the night. And that was important for me. And then because I slept through the night, then I would wake up in the morning. At whatever time I got out of bed, I still felt energetic enough to go through my day. So um, whether... And then sometimes, uh, like today, like today, I did my my yoga practice at um, 10 a.m. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like very early in the morning. There are days I do this at midday, and it just gives me a boost of energy. Um, if if my energy was going down, um, and I I get on the yoga mat and I practice, it gives me a boost of energy, and I feel that I I. I'm able to do more tasks and be more productive and even feel as energetic as Anyona was saying. So I would say, um, find a time that works for you. And if it doesn't, if a routine doesn't work, sometimes um, uh, like make a point of telling yourself, um, this is the time I can do this right now and then go ahead and do whatever exercise you're going to do. Uh, coach? Um, yeah, just to borrow a bit from what uh, you said, um, it really is an individual thing. So there is no particular time that can work uh, for everybody. Uh, but I'd also like to borrow as well from a, there's a book I'm reading there by, uh, by Mo Gaudet, it's called Soul for Happy. So uh, in that book, he 
United States that in society nowadays people are pressed for time. Like we always feel like it was something that we need to do within a given time. And it's just by virtue of how we've been brought up. So we always feel like everything is confined to a small duration of time. And that always just restricts us from really truly being happy. So yeah, he also mentioned that we need to understand that we need to live for the, for the present moment. So don't think about the past. If you did something in the past, uh, or if you have something in the future that you need to do, your decisions now are what really matter the most. So I think in terms of in relation to our discussion today, uh, mental health and the importance of uh, having that state of presence uh, is quite important in making decisions. So um, if it's working out, if you feel like, okay, I need to do my workout in the morning, you know, prepare yourself mentally in the morning if you feel like that's what you need to do, then set aside the time to do that. So I think it's important that we try as much as possible to pay a lot of attention into the mental space that we need to be in in order to, uh, you know, to either decide whether you want to train in the evening or in the, evening, uh, in the morning. So mental health is really, really important when it comes to, this, uh, you know, to your fitness as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ronald, let me just add something into that in regard to the discipline. Like how, uh, uh, what I know from my experience is that uh, for you to engage in any form of activity, you really have to be consistent and also be disciplined in that. Because, I mean, the body always likes the easier way, like just sleeping, you know. Um, how do you get like to nurture that, you know, that discipline of uh, fitness in regard to what the three other panelists have talked about, that uh, you can do this in your own time, no specific time is, is, is standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, good, good question. Uh, to me, I think I'd like to look at it from a different angle. It's all about uh, your goals, your objectives. I mean, uh, What's the reason? What's the, why are you working out in the first place? You know, why are you involved in physical or maybe uh, maybe physical exercise? Uh, I mean, that should at least try and tell you how often you should try and engage yourself with. So, for example, myself, I think uh, it's more of a lifestyle. It's more of a career because if I don't work out, if I don't exercise uh, regularly, if I don't you know push myself to the limit, I might as well lose my position in my, in my team. And if I lose my position, that means definitely I'll have no means of uh, livelihood. I'll not be. Uh, I'll have nowhere to work, uh, to work and maybe try and uh, earn my salary and all that. So it's all about your objectives. I mean, your goals. Do you want to work out so that at least you can? You know, you, you, you can be healthy. You want to work out so that at least you can be physically fit. Uh, you want to work out so that at least you can relieve stress. And the, the best thing about working out is that it, it, it's one thing, but you're killing almost three, four birds with one stone. Because when you work out, at least you're feeling good. You have the feel-good factor in it. I mean, your body-wise, you're getting healthy, you're getting fit. Uh, you're relieving a lot of stress from it. And at the same time, probably, for, for example, if maybe that's your, 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 your career and what, whatever you're doing, at least you're still getting money out of it. You're still working out and getting money. You're being paid actually to do something that you really like to do. And so to me, it's more consistency and being persistent at what you do. Uh, that's, that's what will give you the results. If you want to relieve yourself from the stress, I mean, you, 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 you found your, you know, whatever kills yeah, something that, you know, puts you down, probably you, you, you get stressed a lot. And maybe when you go out, you take a stroll, you take a jog and you feel good after that. I mean, you, you should do it often. You should do it often. Like myself, I must wake up every morning so that at least I can go, I can go for my training sessions before I can even go and do something else. But on a normal day, we normally work out in the morning from 8 to around, mm. I, think, I think, 12. And then after 12, we're done for the day. And the days where we work out even twice, we do double sessions. That's in the morning and in the evening. So you find, out, mm -hmm. you find that for me, I think I'm more used to it because something that I've been doing for the past, I think, uh, over 10 years. Over 10 years. And... Uh, you know, it's just been a routine and uh, it's all about now consistency and now, you know, you, you, you find a time that works best for you, probably the whole day you're at work, maybe in the evening, that's when maybe you can find time to go to the gym and maybe to work out and all that. So you, it's all about now just going with whatever works out well for you. If you want to work out in the morning before you go to, before you go to work, I think something that you, you, you normally do, even though probably you've been a bit lazy of late, uh, but you, you just do something that you, know, you, you really like to engage in. And uh, to me, it's all about now just priority, priorities, prioritizing what, what works best for you. And at the end of the day, uh, the results will be the same, no matter if you work out in the morning or in the evening, at lunchtime, at night, the results will always be the same. Mm. 
Yeah, thank you. Also, uh, uh, just to add on something onto that, we say like in the mental health front that physical health is as important as mental health. And you find that um, sometimes people can put um, focus in regards to like getting body checkups, but then don't pay attention to mental health. What I really have learned about specifically physical fitness at whatever level, as in um, I know we have a, a serious panel here, but even if it's walking or, or jogging, what I've really learned about any form of physical activity is the power it has in regards to helping uh, trigger the brain chemicals, you know, helping it, it that feel good, helping it stabilizing your emotions or dealing with stress. And there's also a, a, a lot of research that I've come across, I'm sure Anyona can agree with me, uh, how effective uh, physical fitness has been uh, in regulating anxiety and depressive mood. So it's really amazing when you look at all the benefits that we have to gain from just being physically fit or engaging in any physical activity. Yeah. Um, you, I know uh, Africa Yoga Project specifically looked a lot into mental health. And there was also a research that was done where yoga is concerned in mental health. Could you please tell us a little bit about that? What were the findings as yes. we continue with this conversation? Okay. Um, thank you so much, Gatoni. Yes, we've been very keen on yoga for mental health um, out of the realization that the, the awareness has not been as, as, um, should, as we would want it to be. So we have a program um, that was developed. Uh, it's called the Mind Body Wellbeing Practice, which is basically um, a research project by Africa Yoga Project and uh, Dr. Catherine Kukoton from the State University of um, New York, based in Buffalo. And this was done, um, a, the, the research was done in Somali and um, has, also, has in Somali and in Kenya. And the program has been rolled out also in Rwanda. And um, it combines some psychological principles with the physical with the with the yoga what we already have so apart from just doing the physical practice of yoga we include mindfulness which is the practice of being still and focusing your awareness in the present moment um, like edmund was talking about and then we do inquiry and inquiry is uh, like continuous self-reflection and asking your qu yourself questions that matter and um, the, the psychological principles, which we call the principles for growth, um, an example is I can, that's a principle for growth. So um, I can, and I am worth the effort. And so we rolled out this program in uh, Rwanda and last year from a survey that we did, um, especially from a group of women that, uh, that between the ages of 35 and 60 years old, um, one of the things to, they noted um, is that they, one, from practicing yoga, were able to walk longer distances. And two is their growth in problem solving. So this helps to reduce conflict in their homes and families because they were able to listen. And from listening, they're able to, like, you know, from their spouse, listening to their spouses and their children, um, the, the act of listening helped them to hear what the other person had to say and that has led to problem solving. And it also helped with um, reducing the levels of anxiety. So the women have particularly been very interested in the mindfulness practice and in the inquiry practice. And this was very impressive um, because we were worried it's a rural community um, to give con co uh, perspective. It's a rural community and these are old women and they'd never practiced yoga before. So uh, just the aspect, the fact that they told us they were able to um, relax, number one, relax, problem solve, 
and um, be able to walk longer distances. That all, in all was um, something very important for us. So yes, yoga does speak to mental health in, in many ways. And one last thing is that um, it helps improve the quality of sleep. And so if you sleep well, then this, I mean, definitely you, you'll be more relaxed during the day and uh, improved awareness of the body and the mind. Um, and and, and as, uh, one of the principles, um, two of the principles speak to strengthening inner resources, you know, um, resources moving from a place of I'm a victim and I'm blaming the other person to moving towards I can, I am responsible for my growth process. I am responsible for my healing process. So um, I could speak all day about this, so I'll stop there. Thank you. Wow, oh my God, I, I yeah, you've really uh, brought that clear. And, I, and I'm so glad, Nyakejwa, that you brought in um, the, the aspect of rural areas because one of the misconceptions that is, is around yoga is that it's for bougie people for a certain social status and um, also age as well. Uh, so the fact that this uh, research specifically was done to older people and in a rural setting and it worked, um, that's actually really good. And some really, really important things that you've seen that some of the changes observed was problem solving. Wow. Mm -hmm. As in, at, at the top of the list of everything that you say, you know, on top of mindfulness and all those other great things that you say, the ability to be able to work longer. I think if we get to a position where we can be able to encounter um, an issue, a concern, an argument, and be able to problem solve it, I think that would contribute a lot in reducing the number of conflicts within um, the family setup, the work environment, yeah. So I see like that's absolutely very beneficial in bringing peace of mind, you know. For example, the, the improvement of sleep. I mean, the brain is the engine of the body. So if this one thing that you're doing for yourself is actually going to help you get better sleep, then absolutely I, I, could, I can see how that is going to help people have or experience um, continue experiencing uh, good mental health, yeah? So, yeah, uh, you should share that research with us so that we can continue learning. Definitely, uh, yes. More onto that, yeah. Um, thank you, thank you for that. Ronald, what, uh, maybe in your own period and from like a federation level, what are some of the things that you feel should be done or can be done to improve the mental health of fellow sportsmen? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, to me, there's plenty of work to be done, especially in our local sports setting, because we still haven't really uh, uh, professionalized the game as such. We still haven't really started looking at uh, football or sports in, in general, even in, in the whole country, as a form uh, 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 from a business angle. Because if you start looking at, at it from a business angle, we'll protect it at, at all costs. You know, we'll involve all the professionals that we we need, straight from uh, you know. Uh, uh, fitness specialists like Edmond, you know, uh, will bring in the, the you know, health, health, uh, health professionals, you know, guys who can help us in terms of even, you know, the, the psycho psycho psych psychologists and all that. But if you look at current, I don't even think there's even one single uh, club that uh, has ever even involved a psychologist. Uh, uh, because, uh, I mean, uh, we, we still we are still struggling, to, you know, to try and uh, keep up with some of the things that, you know, uh, a basic, uh, uh, to me, we shouldn't even be dealing with it because uh, the, the sport itself is not professional as such. And so I think uh, I'd like to see a future whereby uh, stuff like, you know, may, 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 may players getting depressed, you know, uh, may, may mental health or the mental state of players or maybe sportsmen in general are definitely well taken care of. Uh, clubs are getting more dedicated, uh, the federation is getting more dedicated to try and ensure that the player, who to me, actually the first and, you know, the, the first stakeholder and actually the, the, the main guy or the main star in this whole show is well taken care of. 
but at, at, at the moment i don't really think uh, there are a lot of they, i don't i don't even think there's any form of effort from the clubs or from the federations okay. to try and ensure that players you know are uh, are well mentally because uh, again with our football we have a lot of uh, issues that are currently going on, a lot of side shows. And uh, actually, many guys are using football as a tool of, you know, escaping away from depression, from stress, stress from even their families back at, back, back at home. And it's something that even we, we normally talk with friends, you know. There's a day you just come, to, you just come for training and uh, you just realize that, you know what, you have a lot of problems, yes, but uh, the moment of just engaging in football, exercising, you know, just hanging out with friends, the, oh, every problem actually just disappears for a moment. Then after two hours, when you go back again home, <laughs> you actually realize the same problems are there. So I'm hoping that maybe the federation can consider this and also can partner with uh, you know guys like Chiromo, who are doing a very good job, commendable job in terms of ensuring that we 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 are, we are sane mentally, we are we are we are healthy mentally, uh, because uh, you know health is wealth. And I think uh, our state actually, if we are not totally in the right state. I don't even think we can be able to maximize all, every opportunity that exists within and outside football. And we've, we've even seen, you know, it's, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, we've even seen former players, you know, they, they, they're done with their playing careers. They're now move, moving into the next phase of life. The transition process is actually shocking to them because you find that all your life you used to playing football. And now after football, you don't have anything else to do. And actually, we've seen a lot of players falling into depression. We've seen a lot of players falling, you know, some of them are getting sick and all that. And actually nobody to lift them. There's nobody to give to give, give attention to them. And I think these are some of the things that we should be considering as a football federation, you know, as a football fraternity, as, an, as sports, as, a, as an industry in general, so that at least we can start taking care of our sportsmen and our sportswomen. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow, thank you, Ronald, for, for that. And what I hear you say is, is, is that they, they start, there's a gap and there's a really great need to take care of our sports. Um, this country and this federation could actually have a psychology as part of the team that would go along with ensuring that those individuals are not only able to transition better in life, but also presently able to um, negotiate their own life issues. The, that would be supported, and as well as um, keep them at par where their psychological well-being uh, is concerned. You know, and I look forward to a time where that is going to be the norm. You know, I like saying that uh, people don't go to see psychologists just because they are dysfunctional. As long as you're a human, being, you're being a human, that is enough for you to go ahead, just have somebody who can help you negotiate some of the things yeah, that you're sure. going through. There's nothing wrong with um, help. Uh, coach, I hear uh, that if when people, if, if you want to get um, a date, you should look for somebody who is leaving the gym. Because when they're leaving the gym, it's a guy, they're already working like this. If it's a chick, they're feeling, you know, a, a little bit better. I don't know whether you have observed that, Coach, if people actually feel like that. You know, before I go to the question, uh, what's your observation? Are people's spirits and attitudes changed? By looking a certain way, is that what you're asking? Sorry? Is, is that a question? People look, uh, people want to feel a certain way or... Yeah, no, I think, do you actually, are you able to see the difference between when somebody walks into your gym and how, and when they walk out, like in regards to their body expression, in regards to their thought process, like how the conversations are going, uh, their psych, is it usually different or is it just a bit? It would depend, like uh, you can find people who walk in with, with low energy and they still leave with low energy, regardless of how good the workout was. Um, so it really depends on the individual, and um, yeah, so again, most people, yeah, find you can, you can always say, you know, you can get to the involvement levels that go up if you do a workout, uh, but really it's the mindset that you are in at that time. If you feel like, um, mm -hmm. you know, you took the time to actually come out and do something that's good for your body, then you don't see the results now, you can still see, see some joy uh, during that time, that should make you happy. Yeah. I like that. Like, uh also, the mindset that somebody has at that particular time will um, dictate a lot. So, uh, Coach, um, 
obviously because of the restrictions, a lot of people have not been able to go to the gym. And I know just like Ronald, there are a lot of there are some people who are super enthusiasts. Yeah, in regards to like hitting the gym and this made their life be disrupted uh, in, in a very different way. Like, what would you like to tell them? What is it that they can do? Okay, so like, what, I'll only speak on what we've done as a gym at Alphabet. So um, as a goal, we'd like to include everybody because, you know, we'd like to encourage people to understand fitness from a, from a general point of view. So that's why our approach is about a bit more functional. We call it function, functional fitness. Um, so it moves away from the stereotypical, like you have to come into the gym uh, and look like a bodybuilder because that's assumed to be the way of, of happiness or joy or, you know, good mental health and good mental space, whatever it is. Um, but we're kind of moving away from that and letting people understand to appreciate their bodies because, you know, you can have a certain body, let's just say, for instance, you have a different body frame that would never look a certain way. So if you want to gain size for a guy, and you're able to never look like a rugby player because maybe your genetics just don't allow for that. But it doesn't mean that you should then give up on your on your goals. So uh, it's having people first of all understand their bodies themselves um, and understand that their goals should shift from more of a general point into more of an individual thing. So okay, what do I want to achieve from this? I want to be healthy, I want to stay fit, I want to, even during these COVID times, you know, develop some immune system to be able to combat uh, COVID as much as possible to remain as, as, as symptomatic. Um, so it's really just a general overview that we've tried to get people to understand in terms of functional fitness. Um, and also our approach towards the training, the coaching style, it takes a little bit more time to understand that foundational movements are things that you apply on a day-to-day -day basis, like how you get up in the morning because if you're doing, you're doing it the wrong way, how you step up the stairs and avoid straining your back or something like that, um, how to breathe when you're performing an exercise, you know, those different uh, uh, aspects of fitness are what we try and push onto people. So we really try and give people a better understanding of why, is, why it is that they're trying to stay fit, why they're trying to stay healthy, because uh, they need to understand themselves, they need to understand the different methods that will go towards make, making a general, uh, you know, to, to be generally fit. And also for them to understand also, uh, because people need to research, people need to see what else is out there. We're not saying our style is the best style that's out there, but it does just give you an idea of what it is that we, uh, we're trying people to now move towards. So if it's diet, you know, appreciate diet and try and understand what diet fits well into your body uh, because you know you're part of that and also boost the mood. Um, so that's also another thing that people need to consider as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think they can go without this, each other. And I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned about diet because most of the time you find that people will uh, have all the psych then engage in an activity, whatever it is they like, and then they just go and binge. Every time there is like a major walk across uh, the country, like Stan Church, for example, you'll find that all the fast food restaurants and the Nyamachoma joints just used to be packed after that. You know, it becomes counterproductive. But um, we hear you, and I'm sure everybody who is watching, you know, yeah. can hear you. It's also just a, a culture we kind of, like I said at the beginning, we always kind of brought up to think that this is the way to do it because um, yeah. it's, it's very easy to get caught up in that mindset, which again is a very, very, very mental block that we need to get ourselves out of. Uh, so if you feel like, okay, after them come out, you know, the first thing is to get the Nyamachama joints, you know, have a beer at the end of the day. Uh, you're just surrounding yourself in that circle, in that bubble, and that always kind of destroys that um, you know, the joy and the goodness of life and the goodness of wellness. So it's also about surrounding yourself with people who kind of appreciate a lot more than just uh, stereotype and just move away from something that they feel is more of an individual thing to get personal growth out of it. Yeah. Okay, wow. Thank you. I'm just looking at some of the questions that are coming in, but before we get to the question, uh, Anyona, as our mental health expert on this uh, platform, what are some of the coping skills or coping mechanisms that you feel are really necessary or would work for individuals on, on, on this journey? Anyone? 
And Yona, can you hear us? Uh, I was saying oh. there is a good physical fitness attending routine. And can you hear me? Yes, we you can. can. Hey, hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Uh, I think she's disappeared a little bit. Um, there are so many questions as we wait for her to come in. So I'll just, <laughs> okay. So there's one to Ronald. Do we have any strategies put in place to take care of sportsmen and sportswomen mental health in Kenya? I think that's one of the things that you mentioned you would like uh, to see. Yeah. Uh, if, if Sorry. Can I answer that? Can I answer that? Yes, you can answer that. Yeah, just like I said earlier, we don't have any, you know, we don't have any measures put in place. We don't have any policies that are currently that we have uh, that have been put in place to take care of sportsmen and sportswomen uh, mentally, because that's why we are seeing uh, uh, maybe our legendary sportsmen and sportswomen actually suffering. Some of them are even, you know, uh, being disturbed mentally, and uh, uh, the government, even all the institutions that they represented sometime in the past, uh, not even, you know, gone a step forward to try and take care of them. It's something that we don't see actually in those elite leagues, you know, in some more developed countries. These are things, these are cases that uh, we can't hear about because, you know, the clubs or the organizations or the institutions have put in place the proper measures, the proper policies to ensure that all their, all their, all, all their employees, let me just not say sportsmen, all their employees are well taken care of so that they can avoid such, you know, uh, such scenarios, such situations. So it's, to me, it's something that I'm really looking forward to in the, in, the, in the near future. Hopefully, maybe our clubs, our institutions will put some of these, these things in place. But I normally tell myself, you know, uh, change will definitely start with us uh, because I feel I'm in a position right now whereby I can try and maybe instill some of these changes. That's why I have a, an academy myself. I have a sports academy I'm running myself. And you're trying to make sure we do things as professional as we can. And uh, putting in place, you know, measures, uh, maybe policies that will ensure that some of the kids you're dealing with or some of the clans you're working with that are sports are taken care of, you know, mentally, maybe, you know, help us and everything. is something that we, we really take pride in and it's something that we're looking forward to, you know, just show how it's done. So that even when we get to certain, certain levels whereby... Uh, will be even running our own football clubs in the Kenya Premier League. At least those are some of the things that we'll be so proud to, you know, to put outside there and say that, you know what, we're taking good care of our players' welfare and mental health and everything. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Uh, I feel like putting you on the spot, Ronald. Now that you <laughs> Go ahead. This is what you would like from the Federation. This is, you run RO Sports Academy. Are you yeah. uh, connected to a psychologist or a mental health expert to take care of the kids or the players or, or even the staff. Yeah, that, that, that's a good question. I, I, it's actually, uh, I'm even glad that, you know, I met you guys because <laughs> now you're on board. I think we'll be giving you that uh, th that mandate to try and help us with that because we are actually planning to launch officially before the year ends. But uh, again, with the, the pandemic and everything, it has really disrupted yeah. a lot of our, of our activities so that now we just now have to wait until maybe the government gives us the go ahead, you know, uh, the, the, the restrictions in terms of all sporting activities uh, being in place and any gathering are, 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 up, up, are lifted so that at least now that we can, we can roll out the program that we have in place. But uh, we definitely have guys in mind, definitely you uh, being one of them, so that we can we, we'll be involving you a lot so that you can come and talk to some of these kids, some of these you know, girls and boys, because uh, again, looking at the setting whereby where they are growing at, they come from different families facing a lot of challenges and all that and definitely with the right mentorship from you guys maybe uh, you coming on board you know talking to them even us even me specifically because i still have a lot of a lot to learn uh, in terms of uh, mental health and uh, uh, fitness and everything and uh, i'm definitely just looking forward to involving you and uh, it's something that uh, I'm so proud and I think I'm so excited and looking forward to. And even, you know, we'll even be involving someone like Edmond to come also on board, just have a session with them, as, you know, as girls and boys. And uh, also Mary will be also coming on board. So I think we must involve every professional that we can find. Rachel coming on board with different experience and expertise. And I think it's something that we really need to impact on these kids. And we really 
take advantage of that and maximize it so that at least we ensure that every kid that maybe uh, benefits from the whole program that you're trying to run. All right. Uh, wow, I can see our time is really gone, but they had a good question here. Um, for Edmund, and it says, uh, is there a fitness package or plan specifically designed to help with clients' mental health? So is there a specific package or plan that looks at the client's mental health from Alpha? Well, no specific plan or package in place. Um, so I, I wouldn't want to say that there is one, but, um, but we do ask a lot of inter I mean, when somebody does sign up to the gym, we do try and find out either their physical or um, you know, just, uh, you know, something that we would probably need to know in terms of uh, um, you know, what kind of state you're in. Um, usually that gives us some sort of idea of what it is that we need. But, um, so it really depends on the type of coaching that you give. Um, if we need something a bit more technical that we cannot handle, fine, we will seek something mm -hmm. else to kind of help with that. But as a gym, we do try and just get a general overview as to who we sign up to the gym the moment they walk in and uh, we just coach them um, accordingly. Wow, you've had. There's actually such another good question for you, Edward, again, and I really want to ask you this. Uh, just so that I don't have to answer it. But uh, we have uh, Nyawira. We say, what is the effect of religious or non religious fasting on physical fitness? Religious or non religious what? Sorry, say again. What is the effect of religious or non religious fasting on physical uh, fitness? Yes. Uh, well, that's pretty much just fasting as a whole. I don't think. So fasting, you would, I mean, there is the fasting, fine, you can also look at it from like, um, you know, Muslims who fast uh, during the Ramadan period. Um, they're, they're, it would really depend on their history of their, their, their training. If they are people who have been training for a while, um, then their bodies are able to adapt, even if they have to take a little bit of time off without eating. But they would need to scale down their workouts quite a bit. So if it's in terms of the weights they use, we really have to reduce that. The rep scheme, we have to reduce that. If it's the amount of time they take into doing a workout, we'll have to kind of take that down just considering that they're in a deficit in terms of like their diet. Um, but also as a general time of fasting for those who are kind of to lose weight, there is intermittent fasting, there's thus you know, you kind of break down your duration window as to when you can eat and when you cannot eat. Um, so that's basically it from the non-religious uh, side. But it really again depends on how well you know you're prepared to just you know, take on the challenge that it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think I, I share that with you. You know, we say that, actually it's not that we say, the brain basically needs nourishment that comes with food. I mean, fasting is, is, is good. I like to tell people to observe uh, your body, listen to what your body is telling you. If your body is lacking, it will send an alarm in form of a headache, of fatigue, in form of feeling dizzy, you know, whatever it is. So just, you know, listen to your body. Um, and sorry, Ronald, there is a good question here for you. These questions are fire, and I can see the time is going down. So uh, we have somebody called Becky who says, um, the mental health task force asked for submissions and recommendations towards the state of mental health in Kenya recently. Did the sportsman fraternity give their recommendations? And if so, what were some of those recommendations? No, we, we, we never gave out any recommendation. And I think, uh, actually the problem is actually us. Because uh, even us as Arrow Sports, we did a mental, uh, a mental health survey some time back, whereby we invited, uh, you know, uh, 
coaches, uh, players, you know, everybody involved from different sports. And actually, we got like 40 respondents. And actually, out of these 40 respondents, you can, you know, we, we have a huge, a huge number of players uh, and sportsmen and sportsmen. And so we're expecting actually a huge response. And you actually got 44 respondents. So it just tells you that even us as players, even us as the stakeholders, we're actually not vocal enough. We're not, you know, we're not showing any interest. We're not showing any effort to try and improve our own welfare. So I think the challenge, it's up to us to try and actually realize that this is our own art. We need to own it. We need to respect our skill. We need to ensure that we protect ourselves, protect it at all costs. And it's so unfortunate that, uh, you know, we, we were given an opportunity to give some recommendations and we actually let it go because actually I'm even hearing it for the first time because there was no any official communication. So actually that tells you that the guys you have in charge, actually they don't really take care of the players' welfare because I think this is an important issue that should have been, you know, should have been raised and should have been communicated to all the clubs, you know, to all the, to all the players mm -hmm. to give the opinions because it really affects players. So, I mean, it just tells you the type of leadership that we have at the top because these are some of the things that they should be putting at the front, at the front line to try and ensure that players' welfare are taken care of. But having said that, I think it's a very big lesson. It's a very big, you know, learning lesson for, for us so that we can ensure that in the near future we don't let such opportunities go. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the public participation had been put uh, in the newspaper. Um, and like you say, I think like it's just about learning. This would have been something that uh, would have been very, very important for sportsmen to come and present uh, what they feel, uh, what they would recommend, what they'd like to see from you know the government. But then um, I guess... You can still do that. You can still do that. Uh, Nyakinua, I don't know if Rachel is back. Anyona, I don't know if she's back uh, to this conversation. But yeah, you, think yeah. you are, okay, fine. I'll just get it to you because we are past time. Uh, before I get to you, Anyona, if you'll do for us the closing remark. There is a lot of controversy. Be Gadani, before you go to Nyakinua, Anyona? I was saying before we go to Nyakeni, I wanted to, to respond to Ronald's question. Okay. When we were doing the, the task force report and uh, doing our recommendations, our turn in Nyakeni to the task force something about uh, our sports people and how psychologists and mental health uh, experts are in need, they are needed because there were so many issues about um, uh, people who are in the sports uh, field trying to end their lives they were by the verge of suicide. I remember I presented that view to the task force. Hopefully as well because I was thinking the government needs to improve after the ecologists need to be and the stakeholders, people who are supporting them, be it um, who are just and present so hope it will be part Anyona, you are disappearing to come up with a solution on that. Hello. Well, uh, for starters, Anyona, I think uh, you have helped Ronald. Now he knows that somebody somewhere actually represented the sports community and gave a recommendation. So I, I do hope that some of that will come to light. Yeah. So I, I'll task you, Ronald, to look into that. All right. Yeah, no, uh, no problem. Uh, there is also there is normally a, a lot of but not really controversy, I would say misunderstanding where yoga is concerned and some people feel like it's more spiritual. So you find like Christians would be like, uh, can we really engage in yoga? Because yoga, anyway, it's spiritual. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Like, what do you have to say in regards to that? Um, thank you so much. That's a very good and very valid question. Um, what do I have to say to that? One, I'd say yoga is a somatic 
um, practice. So it's a practice that helps you um, like bring, help one um, like get a positive embodiment of their body and of their feelings. That's number one. And so when it comes to uh, spiritual or religious views, I would say anybody can practice yoga. As long as you have a body, you can practice yoga. Um, for example, the type of yoga that we practice here in Nairobi, we focus on three main things. That um, the physical practice, so we will be doing push-ups and we will be doing, um, yeah, we'll be doing some, some things that are physical, some things that are tough and you will wake up the next morning feeling sore. Mm -hmm. And then we focus on mindfulness or meditation, which is basically just sitting still and um, like still and focusing your awareness in the present moment. And then we do uh, breath. So uh, an inquiry, sorry, uh, inquiry, which is basically like I spoke about is personal reflection, um, talking like uh, journaling, um, writing down how your day has been, some questions. So it's basically doing the inner work. Uh, what I'd say is yoga shapes you to become a better person. So if you're a Christian, it helps you get a connection to a deeper connection to God, like a deeper connection. You become a better Christian, if that makes sense, because it, the practice of yoga, as I have come to learn it, has helped me um, become non-judgmental, if that makes any sense. Yeah, so moving from being judgmental to being more accepting and non-judgmental of myself and of other people. So yes, there is controversy. And what I would say is, practice like just practice something and then take three classes practice three yoga sessions and if it doesn't work for you that's okay if it works if it works for you go ahead i mean we cannot um we cannot all fit in one thing we have different uh, likes and different uh, preferences and interests so yes um the controversy will be there and i don't think it's going to come to an end uh, it's just what you choose, what works for you, what serves you. Um, that's what I've come to understand. I Thank you. I like the that. question. Sorry. Yes, it does. I love the part of taking personal responsibility because a lot of the myths and misconceptions are truly, truly things that have been carried down generations based on reported speech, reported story. So if you can try it for yourself and it doesn't work for you, then I think by all means, okay if you're a gym person uh, go check it out do it if it doesn't work for you that's still okay maybe you can go to the field you know and play some soccer or engage in or run you know do something just yeah. do what works for you because what we have actually been able to see and hear today is that um physical fitness and mental health like Anyona says, they are cousins. I would like to say they are like twins, you know? Yeah, they go together. The benefits are really, um, um, the benefits actually outweigh. Uh, and Anyona, I don't know if she's back or completely gone, but um, I can't see her due to the interest of time. We can start with coach. Any last words you would like to tell the people who are watching, the people in this webinar, as well as if somebody would like to reach you, how do they reach you? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this webinar. I do feel like we need to have more conversations in regards to mental health and awareness. Uh, and also as well, bring to light the things, the issues that we don't are afraid to talk about. So uh, I want to thank you for that as well. Uh, for those who want to reach me, uh, feel free to come to Alpha Fit's gym along Bong Road. Uh, for those of us during this time, if you cannot make it to the gym, there's an online option. There is the online access, so there is ways you can do some workouts that if you do have weights in the house, you can uh, sign up to one of the programs that we offer here. Uh, but if you do just want to do bodyweight exercises, you can also sign up to programs that do that as well. Uh, but I would also leave some parting words for people to join groups, join discussions just like this, you know, uh, talk about whatever it is that you're dealing with because you'll be surprised. Uh, you might feel like you have it all figured out, but if you 
just takes learning or hearing from somebody else. It could be the person next door, it could be your askari uh, when you live in the house. You know, just hear them out, hear what they have to say. Uh, but there's a lot to learn from the community sense. And I feel like even during this whole time, that's really what we're trying to do. We're just trying to build togetherness. Uh, so it's important that we understand the importance of the community. Thank you so much. Ronald, any last words? How can people reach you? Please unmute. Sorry about that. I think I'd, I'd also like to say thank you uh, to Chiromo and Jiu for hosting us, for giving, giving us this platform to share our ideas, share our experiences, uh, expertise and everything. And uh, I think it, it, to me, I've really learned a lot uh, from the panel and I'm really looking forward to even learning more. And uh, I think as Arrow Sports, uh, as Arrow Sports Soccer Academy, I think it's this something that we are looking forward to engaging more in, in the near future. And I'm also looking forward to maybe, you know, guys like you partnering with uh, our Kenya Premier League clubs, you know, our organization, our institutions, so that at least you can try and create more awareness in terms of uh, mental health and uh, how it goes hand in hand with fitness. So to me, it's quite a huge privilege to be part of this uh, wonderful, uh, uh, let me call it a masterclass. Uh, it's been a, it's been a huge privilege for me and i'm really looking forward to that to even more that if we can really host such such workshops now that you know with the pandemic and everything how we can't be uh gathering and all that so if at all anybody would like to reach us at arrow sports definitely we are across uh, all social media networks uh, all social media circles arrow sports just type and uh, we can get in touch because we are a community based organization and we're trying to inspire empower and mentor the next generation of boys and girls with an interest in football and also above all to just try and you know develop our football at the grassroots and uh, if at all you have the same interest we're always open for partnerships so i'm really looking forward to more of these workshops Thank you so much, Ronald. And before we go to Mary, uh, somebody has just said, I love the idea of taking three classes to try yoga because of the aspect of mind and body stillness and harmony. Mary, kindly recommend a place I can start yoga today. So as you're giving us the last one, uh, somebody had you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Um, I, re I acknowledge it's, I acknowledge you, Gadoni and Chiromo Mental Hospital for putting this together and all the panelists. Uh, it's been a learning uh, space for the, the last, um, when, since we've been on, it's been a learning space for me as well. And if you would like to practice yoga, uh, Africa Yoga Project, um, we are on social media, on Instagram at Africa Yoga Project, on Facebook is Africa Yoga Project. And we have daily classes that are happening via Zoom uh, every day, two times, two times a day, uh, Monday to Friday at 9 a.m. and at 5 p.m. So you can join. They are donation-based classes. So you can join and a suggested donation of 500 Kenya shillings, you will still be able to join. Um, if you cannot pay the 500 Kenya shillings because we want to reach as many people as possible. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in joining, we also have a program that's more tailored to mind, body, well-being. Uh, reach out, still reach out to Africa Yoga Project on the socials and we'll be able to connect you to the best person to lead you through such a session. So yes, Katani, we are considering putting together a, a, prog a program that's mind, body, well-being um, based yoga that can reach out to different people. We haven't been offering that um, widely, so now we are, look we are looking more on making that accessible to people. Thank you so much. Uh, something that has been absolutely mind-blowing for me during this pandemic is how powerful our brain is in regards to adapting to situations. Initially, you go through distress, but then at some point, your brain begins to recognize what is around you. And if you have the right support, if uh, you task yourself to pivot with the situation, then things can absolutely be able to change for you. So we would never have had this conversation for example, uh, 
if you were not in this space, at least not in a digital platform. It would have had to be a big event planning, booking a place so that all panelists can come in, you know. And I'm so glad that this way we can be able to reach so many more people. Thank you, Ronald. Thank you, Coach Ed. Thank you, Anyona in absentia. Thank you, Nyakenywa. Uh, Bruce, I see you for coming out and sharing your nugget of wisdom. Uh, thank you to everybody who joined us through Facebook. Thank you for your questions. And I would like to thank any other person who is going to look and listen to this conversation long after it's done today. Uh, just to encourage you to go out there, do something positive about your life in regards to physical fitness, in regards to your mental health space. And don't forget that physical and mental health are intertwined. And like we heard from today's panel, this is one way to help you tackle with anxiety, tackle with depressive symptoms. Uh, if you're looking to improve and boost your memory, physical fitness is one of those. If you're looking for a way to uh, improve your self-confidence, this is um, one of the ways to do that. Uh, sleep better. If you're looking for any way to be fit at the least, yeah? while you're being fit, you're also going to be in a space, a better space. Of mind. My name is Gadoni Bogwa and see you next week. Happy dance. Coach Ed. <laughs> Thank you guys. I really appreciate all of you for coming up today. <laughs> okay, the live recording has ended on Facebook. Thank you so much. That was, was so many amazing. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we access it? How do we access it? How do we share what we just talked about on our pages? Sorry? How do we share? Like, do we get that recording as well? On, uh, is that yes, next? absolutely. Uh, yes, Adrian is going to. Uh, He's my main man. Yeah, and he's really going to ensure that all of you guys get the recording. Yeah, okay. My Bluetooth went off in the process. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Danny. Thanks for hosting us. It's been, a, it's, been, it's been a good one. All right. Alpha Fit, now that I have met you, uh, I need a plan. Yeah. I need, yeah. As in, me, Kwanza, for eating. Let me check this out. Uh, try one of the classes in day of three, and uh, you can decide for yourself whether you want to sign up for classes or not. Yeah. yeah, it was really good to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to your videos. Just help us tell people out there that uh, it's not that complicated. You can just have yoga in your sitting room, you can just paper tie your ball. I mean, yeah. All these things are possible, all right? Yeah, you yeah. find you find your poison and yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to your sports academy. We are gonna support you. I'll make sure I look for Coach Ed and Nyakenywa. We will come and support yeah. you. And support definitely. You. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm excited and we can't wait to launch so that at least we can roll out things officially. And I'm looking forward yeah. to partnering with you guys in one way or the other at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. For sure, for sure. All right, bye guys. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. Okay.